Welcome to the next episode of DSTI Insights in Action. We are still in Dubai on a Global Freight Summit organized by our member DP World. And I have a pleasure to have with me now Professor Dennis Campbell from Harvard Business School. Dennis, welcome. Thank you, Marco. A pleasure to be here. So, Dennis, let's deep dive into the topics which might be very interesting for the audience. And, uh, you know, uh, you have been working uh, with DSEI on data trading concept, and yeah. it has been something which we have been developing for a period of time uh, in order to help companies especially excel, uh, you know, their uh, digital supply chain transformation yeah. and efficiency. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, like, you know, what you see as benefits of it and sure, you know, how sure, was yeah. the journey? Well, I, I was excited when we started talking about this idea that uh, because it's it's long been known that in supply chains in general, there's this problem of lack of transparency and that causes all kinds of issues. You know, it could be that, you know, retailers are optimizing their part of the supply chain, manufacturers optimizing theirs and the whole supply chain's not being optimized as a result. Uh, you know, uh, that, that, and part of that is that data's not being located where it could actually be most useful. And so this idea of, you know, can we get more data on what's going on in our supply chain and actually use that to optimize all kinds of areas of performance? I mean, if you could coordinate supply and demand better, match supply and demand better, that has all sorts of benefits for consumers. It has all sorts of benefits for managing risk in global supply chains. And so, you know, what's the solution to that? I think this data trading idea is, um, is one that has a lot of potential. It's a new idea, it's a nascent idea, but I think it has a lot of potential to create visibility where it's needed in broader supply chains. So, so having that in mind, like uh, where do you see that the, the companies should start from a yeah. business perspective? Well, in, in, in relation <laughs> yeah, of data yeah. and, and, and yeah. through the lens of, you know, your work. Sure, sure. Yeah, look, I think it's, uh, I think that, again, this is a nascent area and we're starting to explore it together in our partnership and I think that, you know, one place to start that I think we've, we've talked a lot about is the idea of thinking about what data that you need, first of all, and what kind of context you need it, right? Is it for understanding demand better? Is it for understanding differences in your consumers better? Is it for understanding how to optimize your production environment better? Understanding what data you are missing and what you need, but then uh, equally as important is, what data do you have that actually may not be that valuable to you, but could be really valuable to other partners in your supply chain? And you know, a, a classic example could be if you're a manufacturer and you know, you see consumers coming and looking on your website and you see the kinds of uh, different uh, items that they're looking at, different products, different color combinations. Maybe that data for you isn't valuable in its own right, but actually to a retailer, it might give them advanced signals of demand, for example. Or, you know, you may actually see what they're looking at, but you don't see what they actually choose at the retailer right downstream. If I could bring both of those pieces of data together, it might actually help me design products better. Uh, it might help me think about um, you know, new products, for example. So it's this idea that you know, the uh, different pieces of data may be residing in different parts of the supply chain and can be really, really useful when brought together in particular contexts. And so I think the, to get to your question, I sort of short answer is, what data are you missing that you would be really valuable to you? Where might that be in your supply chain? And what data do you have that could be valuable to your partners? I think that's really the, the idea. And that would be a, a great mindset, I think, to have. So Thank you very much for that. You know, it, it brings me a, a thought and a notion that, you know, we are not living anymore in the world of competition. It's a co-opetition, right? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. sure, sure. what are the areas yeah. where we can exchange so we both uh, benefit at the end of the day? Uh, we have had several conversations during this morning, you know, with, with the various members, mm. and, and one of the key topics which raised is actually the talent, right? Yeah. And and what you do, you know, sure. uh, at Harvard, you know, and, and with your uh, teams of uh, faculty mm. and as well, you know, like with, with the, the participants of the programs is preparing the leaders uh, for tomorrow, sure. right? Yeah. And, and DSCI is uh, working with you on a module for supply chain transformation, yeah. which can be part of one of the programs. But I wanted to ask you around it, like, you know, uh, where do you see the importance of supply chain knowledge for tomorrow's leaders? You know, yeah. because I think especially after COVID, it accelerated, sure. right? Before that, you, you could not be on the front page of Times Magazine if yeah. you're in supply chain. But sure. it seems like the tables are turning. For so sure. we would like to hear more Well, I, I mean, I think there's so many trends that are shaping that. I mean, obviously, that pandemic is one. Like, I mean, everybody very personally and viscerally experienced supply chain shortages, right? You think it's just basic consumer goods, toilet paper, uh, the uh, you know, item, food, you know, these sort of things. People experience that in a real way, brings uh, supply chain to the forefront. So this idea of resilience, 
in the face of really uncertain big shocks, I think that that, that has made it brought it to the forefront. And obviously digital transformation, right? I mean, new forms of data, new forms of technology that can help understand demand better, better match supply and demand, but at the end of the day it requires it requires uh, much more flexible supply chains and flexible organizational structures to adapt. It's, it's one thing if I could better match supply and demand, but it doesn't really matter if as an organization and a supply chain, we can't actually act on it fast enough, right? And so I think that that idea of um, you know, data helping you understand demand, understand supply, understand production processes, bring those things together. It only matters if you can create more flexible organizations, more adaptive organizations. And I think that does mean for leaders, you need to really be rethinking organizational structure, for example. We need more flexible, adaptable structures. Um, sometimes it might mean organizing around different customer segments with really different operational needs, maybe different supply chains for different customer segments. We could think of companies like Dell, for example, I think that is organized in that way. Um, but at the end of the day, it really is this idea of you know, more flexibility, more adaptiveness, it means changes in virtually every aspect of talent management from what kind of people you're attracting to how you're motivating them to think across traditional organizational boundaries um, to you know coordinating faster and working with supply chain partners that sometimes are, are not within the four walls of your own organization. So I think this, uh, this broader transformation is putting pressure on organizations to adapt in much more flexible ways. And I think that that means uh, you know, big changes in how you think about attracting and motivating talent. Thank you, Dennis. I think the, the, the thing which I really like, you know, everybody is um, talking about resilience, but mm. you, you introduce a new, new word, which is flexibility. Yeah. And I think flexibility for the organization might be even more durable in a way and then, you know, sure. a, a better long-term uh, strategy. So uh, looking into it, like, uh, uh, where do you see the role uh, of, you know, organization like DSEI is mm in this kind of cooperation yeah. related to knowledge yeah. and programs like we are trying to do with you? Well, I mean, the thing that excites me about this is it brings, uh, it, it can bring me in contact with so many really interesting, important organizations with very complex supply chains. And one of my longstanding research interests is looking at how, you know, the non-tech native firms, right? We're not talking about Google, Facebook, uh, Airbnb, Uber, and the like, right? We're talking about really important, traditional incumbent organizations with really complex supply chains moving physical products and, and uh, you know, doing uh, services in the real world. And I think that, um, you know, digital transformation, digital technology, new forms of data are, is really forcing these organizations to really change and adapt and innovate in really important ways. And we know in general, it's just, it's a difficult thing for incumbent organizations to transform around disruptive technologies. And we're seeing a lot of your members coming to you because they're really trying to think about how to do this. And, I think that you know, at the end of the day, th these are the kinds of leaders in these kinds of organizations that are gonna have a real impact in the world, both in the labor market, but also um, with consumers. Uh, you know, so I think uh, for me, it's exciting that you are kind of at this nexus of thought leadership and leaders in really interesting, important organizations with complex supply chains that are um, you know, really trying to adapt to, to these trends that are um, affecting everybody. So. So it's, it's really motivating, especially for the companies who are actually in traditional business. And it's not that you only need to be a digital native to survive, but yeah. actually you need to uh, aggregate the digital technology into yeah. your uh, uh, everyday work in the traditional organizations and carry yes, on. Because yes. as you said, you know, we need physical goods close to us. We, need, we, we live in a physical world, so all these things will need to, yes. to happen. So having all these things in mind and you know, the things we covered, let's try to wrap up the discussion with, you know, what would be your advice as, as you know, one of the leading academics in the area uh, to the supply chain leaders yeah. for tomorrow? Uh, wow, that's, uh, I, I think there's so many in interesting areas if I just had to take a 30,000 foot kind of uh, view of this. I think the, I'd go back to this notion of, you know, flexibility and resilience. And this, uh, like, re I think it requires leaders to really fundamentally rethink how their organizations are structured, rethink what we often call the organizational architecture. And this is about everything from, you know, what are the critical tasks that your organization has to do really well, right? That every organization now has to be leveraging data and using data and acting on data, um, or you're gonna get left behind, right? And you think every organization has to sort of really rethink those critical tasks. We also have to think, as you sort of highlighted, we have to think about the people aspect of our organization, right? The talent management systems, what kind of people we're attracting. One of the thing I think, things I think is emerging from our 
interviews with lots of supply chain leaders is this idea of kind of needing more T-shaped people, right? That people that could kind of have depth but could also interact across traditional organizational boundaries because so much of this technology and data actually requires uh, more coordination across you know, traditional boundaries. So I think on the people management front, that's really important. Of course, this means we have to rethink formal systems. Formal systems from structure, you know, maybe this means flatter, less hierarchical structures to be more adapted, to be more flexible. It might mean you know, organizing less around functions and maybe more around markets, more around customer, major customer segments and the like as we understand demand uh, better and understand how to tailor our operations better. And last but not least, it does require us to really rethink what we often call the informal part of the organization, which is, which is culture, right? Culture is what guides decisions in the absence of policy, that we can't write down what people should do in every situation. When we talk about flexibility and adaptiveness, culture is really, really critical to make that work. And so, you know, long story short, I think that, you know, you really need to think, think about your entire organizational architecture as you are, um, you know, thinking about how to respond to these trends, which are only increasing in pace, right? We think about new technologies like generative AI that are changing just so rapidly, and we have to really think about what does that mean for the future of our uh, supply chain functions. I think that that is, you know, means that we have to be really thinking holistically and uh, about how do we create that kind of flexibility to be adapting to these trends. So that's my 30,000 foot view. Yeah, yeah but, <laughs> so. but it's, it's beautiful. And, and why I'm proud, uh, you know, Digital Supply Chain Institute is uh, working with you, your team, and, and Harvard in a way, uh, is because we, we start from the fundamentals, right? Yeah. You, you didn't come and say like, you know, you just acquire the technology or, you know, do this digitally or do that digitally. Yeah. And, you know, the miracle will happen. But actually there are three pillars you mentioned which will always stay. Number one, people. Yeah. Number two, organization. Number three, culture. Absolutely. And, yeah. and those three pillars are, you know, they can give life to technology. It's yeah. not technology will give life to, to people. So in that sense, you know, this is, I think, where we start from the foundations and we keep on building from it. So yeah. thank you very much for being with us. We look forward into, you know, extending our collaboration. And I look forward to having you in one of the next episodes yeah. to talk about, you know, the, the, the programs we are going through together. Thank you for having me. I'm excited about the work we're doing and looking forward to doing more. This was uh, one more DSCI Insights in Action. Thank you for being with us and stay tuned for more.